www.ghostdetectives.org. And in fact, to you know, sort of aggregate all this together, we would set right, up... Let's go ahead and get started on the uh, discussion. Okay, now, uh, a couple of sessions ago, there was a great presentation um, by Heather about all the different ways that you can make money in terms of podcasting. Uh, this one specifically will focus on podcast advertising uh, in, the, in the audio domain. Okay, so we'll just dive a little deeper. Uh, she spoke about advertising just for a few minutes, but I'll get into all the issues because there are a number of issues associated uh, with doing podcasting, um, doing advertising on your podcast. So I'm not, I'm not a guy who, who's funny, so I, get to, I have to steal other people's stuff who's funny. So uh, Chris Brogan, I got this quote from one of our podcasts that I had the transcript done. So he said, it's fascinating how many of us, of my really good friends who are doing incredibly good art, are dead broke. Okay, so, so I think there's one question that people have is, okay, great, I'm doing something artistic, I'm doing something that I want to do. Should I, could I, how do I make money off of, of the podcasting? So I'll talk about uh, what the issues are around should I, so I'm not making a fundamental assumption that everybody wants to do this. Um, I, I'm going to talk about uh, basically why the advertiser would advertise on your show, because it's always important to look at it from their perspective. How exactly does it work? There's some technology to make all this happen that's non-trivial. Um, and then how do I go out and get the advertisers? Okay, now, at TalkShoe, our, our service is basically one where people create these live interactive talk, uh, podcasts. Okay, great. So how do we make money? We make money on advertising. Okay, that's great. And we share the revenues with, with our podcasters. Okay, that sounds good too. So what's the problem? The po problem in podcast advertising right now is getting the advertisers. Okay, that's the, that's the killer uh, problem right now. Now, there's some people out there, the big podcasters with you know, tens and thousands, hundreds of thousands of hits that have no problem getting advertisers. But it's kind of the mid to the low range that has the difficulty. And we've been at this for over, over a year, so I'm sort of sharing some of our experiences. And what would mid to small be, um, like with the number? So certainly, so, certainly something over 50,000 hits a, a, a week, 50,000 downloads a week would be considered large. So I would say the medium is sort of in the thousands for sure. When you start getting above 10,000, you're probably still medium, pretty, pretty tough. If you, do, if you do the math, think of it this way, that um, I'll talk about CPM later, but, but advertisers will basically pay you based on the number of downloads in general. So 10,000 downloads a week at 30 CPM translates to they owe you $300 a week. Like, why are they bothering? <laughs> That's the issue, okay? Is this, you know, why should I bother? So what they really want is a collective group of podcasts that they can get the kind of numbers they're interested in. Okay, so again, there's all sorts of different ways to, to monetize. I actually took notes uh, during Heather's uh, great presentation. I'm not going to talk about these, okay? That, that her presentation, it was excellent. Uh, it's, it's on the wiki uh, in terms of video. And I'm sure she's got show notes and things like that. So check it out, because she talked about all the different ways to make money off of podcast advertising, podcast uh, in general. I'm going to, again, talk just about the advertising side of this. So one of the questions about advertising uh, or even monetizing in general is, should I do this? Okay? And there are certain reasons why people have, which are totally legitimate reasons. They feel it degrades the quality of their podcast. They feel they don't want to be seen as a podcast that puts ads all over it and, and is promoting other things. Uh, they think that maybe the audience will get turned off, and the audience who wants to have a pure podcast, in a sense, gets turned off by the fact that um, there's no, you know, they're just, what are you trying to do, push products at me? You know, what's, what's the deal here? So they're afraid their audience might get turned off. They're afraid that they might not be relevant. So, okay, yeah, I'll do advertising, but what if it has absolutely nothing to do with my podcast? I don't want to have a podcast on, you know, baby power if I'm, advertising, if I'm doing a travel podcast. Okay, so they want to see it's relevant. And there is an underlying kind of feeling by some people that they're selling out. All right? Uh, all of these are legitimate reasons. So, not, you don't have to do this. It's more, what if you do want to do this? Okay? So, 
sort of some of the reasons are, hey, it pays for my hobby. We have a number of people who say well, on our service, you know, Mark, I don't make a ton of money, but it pays for all my gear. Uh, it pays for my habit, basically. And that's good. Some people go the next step and it does pay their rent. They're, they're getting lots and lots of, of advertising. They can literally pay the rent with the kind of money they're making. On our service, for example, the, the largest uh, podcaster uh, last month made $2,000 in a single month from podcast advertising. So, you know, 24000 bucks a year is not, not bad. Um, Others say, hey, other media does it. It's not like podcasting is going to be something special where we're exempt from advertising. I mean, remember when it was terrible that a website was going to have advertising. Remember way back when you bought your first cable TV service? They said no advertising on cable. <laughs> right, there's more advertising on cable than network television these days. So the point is there are other media, and, and obviously, you know, you can make money. So let's put ourselves in the advertiser's head. Okay, so now you guys are the podcasters and I'm the advertiser. I'm the VP of marketing at, at a company and I'm saying, well, well sell me. Well, why should I advertise in podcasts? Now, the way I think of it is, first of all, I want to reach my target audience. Okay? I want to convey my message. That's obvious. I want to do it with some level of frequency as there's sort of a rule of thumb that the minimum amount of time you need to see an ad to remember it at all is three. And certainly, the more, the more, the better, until you get sick of it. <laughs> but believe it or not, even when you're sick of ads, you do remember the product. You tend not, tends not to get a, a bad uh, feeling in your mind. The other thing, and this is very important with respect to podcasting, is that an advertiser wants as much demographics as they can get. TV advertising, believe it or not, the demographics are just horrible. It'll just tell you, you know, male or female, wh where you live, um, and and maybe, you know, things like your, 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 I mean, your zip code is, is based on where you live, so it doesn't even tell you exactly what's going on. Um, there's no socioeconomic data. There's, there's nothing. It's, it's pretty basic. Um, so the nice thing about podcasting, as we'll find, is we know a lot more about our audience than just the average radio show uh, because we're interacting with the people. And again, they want to know as much as, as possible, certainly. But... You know, don't kid yourself, okay? Again, I'm just, but there is really not a marketplace at this time. Okay, now remember, if you do it this way, this ad is burned into your podcast. Um, advertisers feel differently about that. Some say, well, you know, it's an ad for Acura, fine. There'll always be Acuras, and I'll sell Acuras. Other people say, no, this ad is really has a lifetime. It's a, it's a promotion, for example, that I'm doing for, for three months. Well, the problem is somebody downloads your podcast two years from now, and you're expecting to get paid by the advertiser for an ad that he ran two years prior. It's not going to happen. Okay? So sometimes the advertiser won't do a burned-in ad. Now, sometimes they will, because the other thing people realize is most podcasts... Um, it's the, only the last few episodes in time that people download each week, if you look at the statistics. It's heavily skewed. More than two-thirds of the downloaded podcasts are episodes that were created in the last few weeks. Okay. So what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is to create the podcast and put it on some hosting site. Okay, and I'll use TalkShoe now because I know what we do. So, so we have a, a lot of podcasts on our site. What happens is then when somebody fetches the file, okay, when they come and listen to the podcast wherever it is on iTunes or on someone's website or blog or what have you, dynamically an ad is inserted into that podcast sort of on the fly. I mean it really goes to us and then we we send it. But the point is this then I can change my ads. Right? So GoDaddy is one of the advertisers right now. They can have a different promotion three weeks from now, and a different ad gets inserted. So it's a very timely type of a process in terms of inserting ads. Hiptronic is, is the, uh, our particular partner. They have basically the software that does this, as well as all the software behind this, which is saying, okay, which of these podcasts gets which of these ads, 
you know, so, so this, this whole matrix going on, for what period of time, et cetera. Okay, and that's inserted and downloaded. Again, the ad is not burned in at all. It is not part of the podcast. It is only when it's um, downloaded or listened to. And then the, the podcaster has the choice of whether to accept advertising or not, basically. Okay, any questions about, about this sort of model? find that out from the, from the company, you'll be able to find out the ad. Of course, you can listen to your own podcast, and it'll get inserted, and you'll know. So that's, a, that's one way. But the other thing is there really is kind of some de facto standards. I mean, people are know that, you know, 60-second spots, not going to happen on podcasts. So everything's under 30. Generally, under 15 is the, the kind of accepted standard. We're actually, as talk show, I'm going to be advertising on a podcast network, so not this way, but somebody else, uh, one of our customers actually, um, Jason Van Orden is, has, has a podcast network he's putting together. We're going to advertise on theirs and we've got about, a, a, it's going to be a 12 second spot. Okay. And they, in their case, dictate, not even dictate, they suggest it. And I said, that, that's fine. You know, we, we can say what we want to say under, under 15 seconds, no problem. But you're right, the, the longer it is, the more you hit the, you know, the, the skip well, some, button. Sometimes any concerted ad, you know, it's kind of like a different um, space than, the, say, the voice space of the host of the, you know, the right. podcaster. So it's almost like letting go of their hand, right? Like, do I really want to wander off? Because as a, as, a, as a listener, you're sort of victim to all of this stuff. It's, you know, you don't want to lose that trust with the audience, I imagine. Right. You don't want to send them off on some hyperlink or some other value system, you know what I mean? You want to, it's, it's a very intimate space, you want to keep that, that close. And that's one of the things that the, the one of the, the first slides I had was to advertise or not to advertise, I mean to accept advertising or not to accept advertising. And, and ultimately it's the podcaster's choice. They can opt out of this entire model equation and everything that I'm talking about and saying, I just want to preserve the integrity of my programming, I don't want to be pushing any products, I don't want anybody inserting ads, and then I don't want to make any money through podcast advertising. So either I won't make money at all or I'll make it some other way. That's, that'd be your choice. I'm just sort of maybe highlighting what you said earlier, which is when the podcaster is, is speaking it with their own voice, right. somehow that trust connection is still preserved. It's Absolutely. Like, days radio, like this person personally endorsing it. That's a different experience, user experience, than the insert of that. So this, this, this is something that we're Yeah, we're, we're advertising. We've, we've contacted a number of tech podcasts and said, I would like to advertise TalkShoe on your site. So now I'm on the other side, right? I'm flip, flipping the hat this way. Uh, I'm an advertiser. So I'm the one asking all the questions about their, their podcast. And one of the things in all cases I said is, I want you to try our product. It'll just take 10 minutes. I'll get you on the system. I'll show you how it works so that you, when you do say, this is a great something, you know, product, you, you believe it. And if you don't, and if it turns out you say, hey, this stinks, well, then I don't really want to advertise on your stuff anyway. So it's, you know, it's okay. Any other questions about this sort of model? Can you use a combination of burned in as well? As yes. So, for example, um, Blueberry is one of our partners. Okay, so you can go, uh, you know, create your podcast on, on TalkShoe, you know, interactive. We store it. We put it on our servers. You know, we give you the bandwidth. All that is for free. And then you're over here. And Blueberry as a partner, we say if you want to go to Blueberry, here, here's how you get to Blueberry. I mean, we're developing a web page specifically to have you jump to Blueberry. And Blueberry is doing red ads. So in essence, we would be inserting, and then you would be reading. Probably for a different company. Most likely it would be for a different, different product. So you'd be getting both. And most advertising, I guess I didn't mention in terms of inserting, Insertion today is at the beginning and the end. Okay, insertion in the middle cannot really be done right now. There's no sort of codes or, or sounds or anything like that that can say insert ad here yet. Those <laughs> exist in 
in the radio models and such, but they don't exist in podcasting yet, so it's just the, the front and back. So the middle, in essence, is the red ads, right? or the edited ads into the, to the show. I do envision um, a time not too far away where during the show you'll probably be saying to yourself, and now a word from our sponsor type of thing, and click something, you know, ad will be, be said, and then go from there. I mean, ultimately, we'll, we'll match the kind of radio model. I mean, we sort of know the answer, uh, but this is the limitation of technology right now is the beginning and the end. Anything else on that? That was your question? Yeah, I asked, you answered it. I was wondering where the automatic ad inserts would go. In, in terms, yeah, so, yeah. right. Okay, in terms of advertising rates, so if you want to start doing the math in your head, because I know everybody right now is going to start multiplying the number of downloads times the CPM rate. Um, the CPM is a existing uh, measure on the internet for impression-based ads, which is what these are, right? They're mostly impression-based. Um, and the going rate is, a, is in this range here. This is a 10 to 30 CPM, which basically means 1,000. Okay, so for every 1,000 downloads, you're going to make, say, 20 bucks. Okay, that's, that's kind of the going rate. Um, it can be more than that. The, the big podcasters and the guys that, that you know, um, you know, on the Rocket Booms and, and the Twit TVs and things like that, they are getting more than this. They are getting into 50, 70, over 100 CPM because they can, okay, and everything in life is negotiable. But if you're going to go to a service and not negotiate your own ads, expect to get in this particular range here. <coughs> okay, if you want to go ahead and do your own sponsorship, it's really whatever you can negotiate. So if you have a company that's going to come to you, they'll probably start here. You're going to quickly tell them, yeah, but the, we're not a CPM-based system. You know, we, we have a better audience base and, and all this sort of thing. And you'll negotiate what a sponsorship. Because a sponsorship is basically going to be your whole program. They're going to say, always oh, sponsored by this company. Um, there's going to be an association uh, between your, your company, I mean, your podcast and their company. And you're probably also going to bundle other stuff with it. You'll probably give them some banner ads on your website. Um, you may give them a placement inside your podcast where you talk about their product. So it's, it's a whole package. And, they're, and, they're, and those are good things. I highly recommend if you're going to go to an advertiser that you, that you go with a package deal. Because if you go with just the downloads, they're going to just go here. Right? And, and you, you don't have a lot of negotiating room unless you're somebody big. If you go with a package, you can say, well, you're getting all this other stuff. I mean, you're getting all my web hits, you're getting, I'm mentioning my blog, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's more of a package deal. Now, there are ads that are not in the C CPM. They're not impression-based. They're actually performance-type ads. So, for example, like one of the ads on our system now is from GoDaddy. It's the classic, you know, 10% off from GoDaddy, and you have to mention the code. Okay, so that's a performance you're obviously hoping that you'll sell more than if it were just CPM. Advertisers love this, right? Because they can't lose. If they get a customer, they get a customer. If they just get an impression and nobody buys anything, they get a nice impression for free. So they like to do that. So you have to, I would be very careful on the pay for performance unless you have experience selling that product <coughs> and think that it's, um, you know, think you really can sell it with your website and your blogs and, and mentioning it in your shows and, and all that sort of thing. But, but these, these can be potentially. Um, in general, if you're going through a third party, okay, a third party could be someone like, like a talk shoe, someone like a blueberry, it could be a, um, an ad rep. So any, any basically middleman you're going to get about 50 to 70 percent of this. That's, that's kind of the going, going rates. That may change over time, but I think it's, it probably won't. If you, if you actually look at like Google, AdWords and such, you're in these kind of ranges. So I would expect the same thing to happen over time. Again, if you negotiate your own, you get 100 percent, right? But you've got to spend all the time negotiating. 
and find the advertisers. So you're, it's a choice. Do you go through a service, do uh, you go to a hosting company, or do you knock on doors? What are we doing on time? It's 3.15, right? Is the We've end? gone 36 minutes. Right, okay. Okay, now another thing that, that people then, um, if you're an advertiser, again, put the advertiser's hat on, back on for a second, what are they going to say? Well, how the hell do I know you have so many downloads? And there's, you know, a whole science, basically, in figuring out what a, down, a download is or what a listen is. One of the biggest uh, filters, for example, is duplicate IP addresses. So on our system, for example, if you come in and listen to an episode, we block, in essence, block that IP address for that episode forever. So we'll, if you come two weeks from now and download it again, we won't count it as a download. That's really conservative. But in this game with advertisers, you've got to be conservative because they've got to buy in and trust this system. Okay, so but, that's just, uh, but uh, all people do something like that. They may not do it forever. They they may do it for a week, they may do it for a day, they may do it for a month, but they, they duplicate IP addresses is, is one of the things that people filter on. Now, you may be saying, what if 10 people in the same company all have the same IP address? Like, you know, <coughs> that's the way it is. Um, it, it's hard to filter each person. If I'm an advertiser and you're the one that's providing me this information, how can I really confirm that the information you're giving me is true and you're not just magnifying it? Because I, have, I don't have access to, to your uh, tracking numbers. You actually will have access to the tracking numbers. Okay. Okay. And, and advertisers do ask what your formulas are on how you calculate them. And, and on our system, every single podcast, every single day gets upload, upload. In fact, it gets updated every hour on how many downloads you had and the whole nine yards, how many people listened, we, we have to do it by how many hours they listen to, and there's all sorts of statistics. So they have to buy into your statistics. And that's why the people like the Kiptronics exist, because people are trusting their statistics, they're trusting our statistics because we've, you know, proven, you know, here's what we're doing. In fact, we have some of our hosts, some of our hosts who say, your, your numbers, Mark, are less than they should be. And we're like, yeah, because we're being real conservative right now. We don't want to get anybody thinking that we're somehow pumping up numbers. Right. What percentage of people listen to the uh, podcast live versus downloaded? On our, on our yeah. service, um, approximately 10% of the people um, will listen live in some fashion. And in, in, on our system, there's multiple ways to listen. You can be on the phone or call in via Skype. You can just stream it to your, to your desktop. Um, so there's different ways to, to be live, but the, it's, it's less than 10% uh, do it live and the, the remainder are uh, through downloads. And I would say, well, just since you asked me about statistics, um, in terms of, the, of where we get the downloads from, because we, we know where they're coming from, over 50% of our listens or downloads are coming from the podcaster's website. They're the ones pulling in the traffic, um, which is why we continually message to the podcasters, you guys got to market your stuff, <laughs> or you got to go to a pod camp at least and get somebody else to market your stuff for you. Um, obviously, the rest are coming from the iTunes and the you know, podcast alleys and all the other directories and Yahoo's, et cetera. And then some come from our own site. We have a directory, naturally. While you're on our site, you can listen to anything that Okay, so I've, I've talked about most of these guys. There, there is, you, you may actually hear some stuff, this is just for knowledge, but people have heard of Arbitron. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but this is for radio. It's literally, think of a notebook that you're carrying around saying what you're listening to and what advertisements you remember and things like that. It's paper-based. <laughs> That's how people literally make their decisions for radio advertising purchases today. So some of them are saying, well, we want the same thing. We want your listeners to fill out surveys so that we know, you know what they're listening to and things like that. So some, there is a, a movement that way. It's a real pain in the neck <laughs> to administer surveys to see for each of your you know, podcast, have people fill out. It's just a pain. But the advertisers are, are asking for it. Personally, I think they're throwing up a barrier because we got more demographics on 
in the podcast world than they've got on radio. But that's not, nonetheless. So PodTrack actually it does some things with, with surveys. Okay, so, so in, in terms of uh, concluding, basically it's, you know, the way I look at it, it's, it's your decision whether or not to accept podcast advertising. I've tried to present equally the reasons to advertise and not to advertise. Ultimately, it is your decision. Um, I at least take away, though, it's not like amoral. <laughs> There's nothing absolutely terrible about putting an ad on your podcast. You may choose for content reasons not to do it, but guess what, guys? It's happening. There's going to be ads in podcasts. You know, we're talking in the millions of downloads now. What happens when it gets into the hundreds of millions of downloads? Obviously, people are going to advertise in the podcasting realm. So it is going to happen. But you decide whether you want to be on it and to maintain your, I guess, editorial integrity. And ultimately, it's your show. And you can do this now. That's kind of the last message. So if you want to, uh, for example, take your podcast and you know, upload it to our website, I mean, we've got the ads. Okay, and we're paying people based on the number of downloads. So you'll start making money immediately. Okay, I just had a question. This issue of like if somebody downloads and doesn't listen all the way through, or how is that kind of dealt with? How are advertisers convinced that right. well, the downloads well, well, one is there are some studies that show people are listening to, to the advertisers. So that, that's more of a, a study, you know, way to look at it. Um, the, the other is to remember that in all forms of media, you can't answer that question. So on this hour-long radio show, and a guy listened to the whole hour, did he listen to any ads? I don't know. I would have clicked to another, <laughs> potentially clicked to another radio station and clicked back or something like that. So on TV, you know, you get, a, you get, get some beer from the fridge. So nobody knows how many people are literally listening to, but it, it's the law of large numbers says enough are listening that the, the campaign will be effective. Now, PodTrack is trying to go into your PC and literally see via iTunes if you're opening and if it was downloaded to your iPod and if the iP you literally listen to it on your iPod, they're doing all this technology is, I consider it fairly invasive, but you know maybe people get used to it to actually see if you're opening it and are you listening and all that sort of thing. So that they're they're going a full full nine yards. We'll sort of see what happens. Okay, other other questions? Yeah. I guess uh, I guess how many subscriptions does the average podcaster need for you to consider working with them? Us? Yeah. One. <laughs> That's easy. We, we don't care. I mean, we, we, we sell the bulk, basically. We're saying to people, podcasting as a group is something you should buy if you want. We'll sell you by category, but you should do it on podcast right now because of the demographics of listeners in general to get started. Um, and then we're the ones who, in essence, dole out the money, whether it's one or whether it's 10,000 a week. Okay. Did you have a question? Okay. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to verify, um, Pat, you're saying that Repeat visit to the same site is not counting again. Repeat most in, in general. If you listen to the same episode, but the episode, the episode is down to the episode level, then most systems um, block it. Block it out. Block as, it, so it counts as one. It counts as one hit. Now there's generally a timer. Per episode. Yeah. Right. Episode. And there's a timer. I mean. Like, we happen to do it forever, but we're going to move to, you know, a few weeks or something like that. Because if you do come back a few weeks, you probably are going to listen to it again because you really <coughs> liked it. So, but we're trying to prevent people from scamming the system, you know, basically. Listening to the same one a hundred times. Um, along those lines, I've heard uh, issues of um, larger uh, internet providers caching po uh, podcasts so that, you know, you can have people who are in, in Canada, or Roger subscribers, and they'll only go as far as Rogers when they pull that file, even though they they're completely unrelated. I'm wondering if there's if there's something that can be done to yeah, to I, deal with that. I unfortunately don't know the answer to that. I've heard this. I've heard the same thing, and and we're basically looking into it. There's not enough information yet for us to figure out if that'll happen, when it'll happen, things like that. But I have definitely heard that same same potential issue. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. That's it, and uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for coming. 
Obviously, I work for TalkShoe, or I wouldn't be wearing this hat around for all these days. If you want to talk about TalkShoe at all, this is a live program that's being done right now on the internet. You know, thankfully it's the uh, you know flat rate unlimited use kind of call, but <laughs> that would have been.